Now, somebody has said this. This is kind of a scary thing. Every nation gets the government it deserves. Every nation gets the government it deserves. That our government, if we got honest, is a reflection of who we are. The flaws that we have as a people is reflected and magnified in our, in our government. When we don't like what we see there, it's often because of what we really would see in the mirror if we looked hard enough. Back in the, 18, the 1700s, this is a quote from the 1700s, the late 1700s. Somebody said this about democracy. They said a democracy can only exist until the voters discover that they can vote themselves largesse from the public treasury. That word largesse is a word for money or gifts from the public treasury. From, the, from that moment on, the majority always votes for the candidates promising the most benefits from the public treasury with the result that a democracy always collapses. The average age of the world's greatest civilizations has been 200 years. They're saying the point of the decline is when people figure out that they can, by majority rule, vote themselves largesse or gifts or money from that government if they just get in the majority as a democracy. The late 1800s, a guy named Benjamin Disraeli said this 100 years later. He said, great nations rise and fall. The people go from bondage to spiritual truth, to great courage, from courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependence, and from dependence back again to bondage. As you look at that, you wonder, where are we? Where are we on that? If I had to pick it out, I'd say we're independents. Entitlements and feeling like the government owes us to provide for us. And we've moved farther along than we really want to think about on that. And we don't want to think about the next step. You know, during Paul's day in this Roman government, part of what they did and part of what, if you visit Rome, you'll see the Colosseum. They would fill the, the Colosseum with 50,000 people. And part of what they would do there is they would have Christians whose lives were taken by uh, wild animals or they were murdered there for sport. But you know, at the same time that that was going on in the Colosseum, that underneath the, the streets of Rome were places called catacombs, these tombs where people were buried, where Christians would meet in secrecy and pray for things to change. You know, that's where it's all going to start. When the government is a reflection of us as a prayerful people. When the government is a reflection of us as a people committed to God at whatever cost. You know, the Bible says that in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, when my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will heal their land. The first step is recognizing where we are. The second step is using our freedom that we do have and doing, using it properly. But all that will make no difference unless we become the kind of people that God can begin to use to change, to change our society, to change hearts, to get truth out there. And then our government will begin to reflect a people whose heart is toward God. I don't know what God has in store for, for America in the next decades. But I pray that he will do whatever he needs to do to get us back to being this kind of people. And we may not like what he has to do. But it will be best for us if he does it. It will be best for our kids. It will be best for our grandchildren. If God does whatever he does to break the cycle we looked at and to get us back to the point of being the spiritual people who started this country, who had a heart for him, and get us back to being that kind of people so we can start again another 200 years 
but start to be the people that can change this world and change people all around us for the cause of Christ. Would you